If you're like me, you're self-hosting a lot of services at home. And if you know me, you know that I'm a software engineer. And there are times when I just need to edit some code on the go, and I don't have access to my development environment. This leaves me with a few choices. One, I could remote into one of my virtual machines and edit the code there. But that requires a lot of bandwidth and doesn't work great in high latency environments. But recently, I found a service that I can self-host in my home lab environment that allows me to edit my code in any browser or something like this. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about self-hosting a VS Code server. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about self-hosting some services there, we can. So let's talk about self-hosting a VS Code server. As I mentioned before, I'm a software engineer. I write lots of custom code for a lot of my services that I run here at home. And if you're subscribed to the channel, you know that I have some open source projects on GitHub. You should probably subscribe to the channel. And all of those services I run here in my home lab infrastructure. And there are times when I'm on the go that I actually need to fix a bug or edit some code and deploy it. Most of the time I have to wait until I get home to fix it. But there are times when I just need to apply a simple fix and I wish that I could do it on the go from a browser. And in that browser, I wish I had access to all of my developer tools. Well, that's exactly what CodeServer does. So today, in this video, we're gonna walk through setting up CodeServer on your own home lab infrastructure. This will be a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up CodeServer so that you can get VS Code in your browser. So there are many ways to install this. You can install it on bare metal, you could virtualize it, or you can containerize it using Docker. Bare metal and virtualizing it are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is run a simple curl command and in a few minutes, you're up and going. So today we're really gonna focus on getting this running in Docker. We'll start with plain old Docker and then we'll move on to something called Rancher. Rancher is an orchestration framework that helps you orchestrate Kubernetes, which then helps you orchestrate Docker. If you need help setting up Rancher and Kubernetes, I've got a complete tutorial on this. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial that will have you up and running with Rancher, Docker, and Kubernetes in just a few minutes. And then once we have that running, we'll walk through Code Server, getting it set up, and we'll even push some code up to GitHub. So with that out of the way, let's get started. First, we'll wanna go into our Rancher instance. Then we'll go to clusters and we'll select default. You can see here some of the services I'm self-hosting on this Rancher cluster, but let's deploy a new workload. Next, we'll wanna go out to linuxserver.io. Linuxserver.io manages a lot of my favorite Docker images. So we'll go out there and then we'll go to documentation. And here we'll find code server. So if we scroll down to usage, we'll see our Docker command. And if you're using plain old Docker command, you can run this command. You would run docker create. We're gonna name this container. We're gonna pass in some environment variables. The first is PUID and then our ID. The next is PGID and then our ID. We'll talk about how to get that here in a second. Next, we're gonna pass an environment variable of TZ for our time zone. Then we have the option to pass in a password to password protect this web server. Next, we're gonna pass in an environment variable for our sudo password, and that's optional too. And then a proxy domain is also optional and then which ports we're gonna expose or publish. Then we're gonna mount a volume to this Docker container. And then, so we'll see here, we're gonna mount from the host path, a path to our config, to the containers slash config folder, and then the name of the Docker image. So if you're running plain old Docker, you can copy this command, paste it in your terminal, and have it running here in a few seconds. But we're gonna translate this to a Rancher deployment, which is a Kubernetes workload. So we'll go here. So back in Rancher, we'll name this first. So let's name it Code Server. So now we need to get our PUID and our PGID. And we can get that by SSHing into our Ubuntu server that's running Rancher. Once you do, we'll just type ID. There you'll see our UID and our GID. For me, it's 1001. This might be different for you, so I would definitely run this command. But we see here ours is 1001. So here we'll expand environment variables and we're gonna add a new variable. So PGID is 1001 and PUID is 1001. Next, let's take care of our time zone. Mine is America slash Chicago. Next, let's add the optional field of password just so you can see what this does. And you'll wanna make this something secure. I'm using this for the sake of this tutorial. And let's also do the same for our sudo password. Again, you wanna make this secure. Okay, so let's map our volumes now. So we'll go down to volumes and we'll add a volume. And let's use a bind mount, a directory from the node. Let's name this code server. And path on node, let's specify a path on the server that this container can mount. 
So back in our server, let's create a folder for our config. So first I'm gonna make a directory called code server. And then inside of there, I'm gonna make a directory called config. And then we'll wanna PWD and see the path to the config. So for me, it's slash home slash techno tim slash code server slash config. And we'll paste that in here. And then for our mount point, this is the mount point inside of the container. That's just gonna be slash config. We're almost done. So if you notice, we have an environment variable of sudo password. This is because we may need to elevate our permissions while working within our code server. And to do that in Rancher, after we clicked advance, we'll go into security and host config, and then we'll toggle on this flag to allow privilege escalation. Okay, so the last thing we need is our port, and that's right here for port mapping. And this image publishes port 8443. Now, you can publish any port you want on the outside, but on the inside, they've only exposed 8443. So let's name this port code server, and it's going to be 8443. And for this example, let's use host port. And the listening port, I'm gonna to set to 8443 as well. Now, if you're already using port 8443, you'll wanna choose something else. And the last thing we'll need to do is just set our Docker image, and that's right here. It's Linux server slash code server. Oh, and one more thing we'll wanna take care of, that's our scaling policy. Since we're using a host port for this demo, we can't run multiple nodes because they occupy the same port. So when we upgrade this pod, we can choose a rolling or a kill all pods, then start new. I typically choose kill all pods, then start new, but a rolling stop and a rolling start will also work. Okay, and if everything looks good, we can click launch. Okay, and it's already up and running. So let's check out our code server. Okay, so the first thing we're greeted with is, is this sign-in screen. Now, it's not really a sign-in screen, it's just password protecting the rest of the service. And here we'll enter the password that we use for our password environment variable. And after signing in, here's our code server. It looks exactly like VS Code. Now you might notice this warning when you sign in. It's telling us that this is running over HTTP, which is insecure and some things might not be available. So it'd be a really good idea to put a reverse proxy in front of this with an SSL certificate, but that's out of scope for today's tutorial. If you'd like to see a reverse proxy tutorial, let me know in the comments section below. But we'll click I understand and we'll proceed. So if you've used VS Code before, you know this looks exactly like VS Code, but we're running in a browser. Here we're greeted with a welcome screen and we can customize our experience. And we can install a lot of the same extensions. A quick note about the extensions here, you may not see all of the extensions that you see in VS Code. This has to do with VS Code requiring that their marketplace only be loaded within VS Code or something like that. So what CodeServer has done is found the source code for most of these extensions and listed them here in the extensions finder. I found most of the extensions here that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, so I wouldn't worry too much about it but I just wanted to call that out real quick. So let's install some of my favorite extensions. So JavaScript for sure, ESLint as well, GitLens is one I use, YAML is another, VS Code Great Icons is another, I like my blue folders, Spellchecker too, and I'm sure there are many more, but let's use these for now. So let's reload. Okay, got my extensions. And here's another cool thing about VS Code. You have access to the terminal too. So if we click the hamburger menu and go to terminal, say new terminal, Here's our terminal. And if we type in pwd, we can see we're in our config slash workspace. And from here, we can create a new file, index.js, create a JavaScript file, const test equals hello. And we can see we can write JavaScript and we get syntax highlighting. So this is pretty cool that we're doing all of this within a browser. But where it gets really awesome is working on a code project. So how do we do that? Well, most of my code projects are in GitHub. So let's configure SSH, clone a repo, and work on it. So first we'll need to configure our username in Git. That's as simple as git config global user.name and then your username. Next, we'll want to set our commit email address. This is as simple as running git config dash dash global user.email equals your email address. Next, we'll want to generate a new SSH key with our email address. This is so we can use SSH to clone our git repos. So it looks something like this, ssh dash keygen dash t rsa dash uppercase c and then your email address. Now git is configured so we can clone a repo. Once we've generated our key we need to add that key to github. To do that we'll need to echo out the contents of our id underscore rsa dot pub. Then you'll want to go out to github and add that key to your account. I named mine code server but you can name it anything you like. And once we have that set up we can clone and make changes to our code. So let's do that. So I want to make some changes to the open source discord bot that I have on github. You'll find this on github.com slash techno dash tim. Here, you'll see Technobato Discord. This is my open source Discord bot. So let's click on that. 
Then we'll want to click on download code button and copy this SSH command to our clipboard. A quick call out right here. Some of your keyboard commands may not work properly. You might need to remap them, but I found I need to press control shift V instead of control V. You can change this in settings, but I thought I'd call it out here. So with that on our clipboard, let's clone this repo. So let's get clone and then paste this in. Say yes here, and we cloned our repo. And we can see here in our workspace, let's open it up and here's our code. So the first thing we'll need to do is install our dependencies. I use Yarn, so let's run Yarn. And we have access to Yarn. We're gonna install our dependencies now. Okay, so all of our dependencies are installed. And here's something else that's also cool, is that this isn't running inside of our browser right here. This is actually executing on our code server, which means that all of the processing power is happening in our home lab. And this is really great for low power devices like a Chromebook or a tablet. And we don't need to install any dependencies on our machine right here, but let's keep going. So just to prove I can actually develop inside of the browser here, I'm actually gonna commit some code. So let's write some simple tests for our bots. First thing we're gonna do is add Jest. I like Jest for testing. Okay, so Jest is added, so let's write a test. So I'm gonna create a new folder called test underscore, and let's create a new file called helpers.test.js. And so we wrote a few tests here, just a couple of tests to verify our code. So we actually need to execute these now. So let's go into package.json and create a test script. Change our test script that really wasn't doing anything to execute Jest. So one more thing we'll need to do is to create a Jest config file so that we can transform this file during test time. So our Jest config should look like this. This will transform our ESM modules during test time. So we'll need to add this node module as well. So we'll need to run yarn add just ESM transformer and to our dev dependencies. And once we have that, we should be able to run our tests now. So I ended up writing some more tests so that this file has more test coverage. So let's test it now. Yarn test. It's awesome, all of our tests pass. Now that we've written this code, let's push this code up to GitHub. So I'll do a git status first to check my workspace. You can see my changes that are pending. So let's add these to this commit. Let's commit this code and let's push it up to GitHub. Okay, push it up to GitHub. Let's go check GitHub. And if we go out to github.com slash techno dash Tim, we can see our repo here, techno bot of discord. We'll go into this repo. We'll see a commit from me just a couple of seconds ago. Let's look at this commit and here's our code. And so that shows how powerful code server is. Within just a few minutes, we added the code server Docker container to our home lab. We self hosted it. From there, we went into a browser we were able to use VS Code, we could then clone a repo from GitHub, we could make code changes, and we can push it back up there. And we did all of this from a browser. We could do the same thing from a Chromebook or an iPad or an Android tablet, because most of the heavy lifting is being done on your server, which makes this very powerful for anyone who wants to write some code on the go. And it's not just for software engineers. You can use this for anything you host in GitHub, like scripts or documentation. Now, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention security. If you're gonna use this as is, you'll wanna be sure to use a VPN to connect back to your home lab instance. And I highly recommend doing this over SSL. So you'll wanna set up a reverse proxy with an SSL certificate in front of code server so that all of the communication is encrypted between you and the reverse proxy. And like all passwords, be sure to use something unique and secure. So what do you think of CodeServer? Do you see yourself hosting this in your home lab? Do you see any value in hosting this over just opening up VS Code? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, Hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Everyone have a good night. Yeah, headphones, man. I should, I should totally have like outro music. I don't even know what it would be. It would, it would probably be this, but no, it'd probably be, this would probably be my intro. Intro music. Oh no, I don't know. But this song is so awesome. This is for the headphones, Craven. Thank you. But everybody have a good night. I'll be back on Thursday. Take care. Thank you so much. Peace.